60 seconds. Uh, hey, Susan, hey, Alan, are you the tape room? I'm here. Great. Uh, we need speed in about 10 seconds. How's the beta deck? Beta deck's happening. Okay, Cookie, we need names. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, let's take attendance. Um, Nate, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How you doing? Uh, ding dong, the witch is dead. Hello, people. How you doing? My name's Cookie. Welcome to our show here. How many people are going to be playing the game? Uh, You're a single player, is that right? All right, could you give me your name, please? Uh, look, they don't have no name. I don't even know what that is, but... Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, are you looking for a seven-question tournament-length game or a full 21-question deal? Gotcha. 30 seconds. You have the letter B as your buzzer. That's B, as in buzzer. Keep working on that. All right, last house camera three Helen, down. Yeah. Helen, can I yeah. get... Uh, uh, look, I, look, I need a PA here right now, on the double. 20 seconds. Hey, we got 20. All right, question comes on the screen. You think you know the answer. You buzz in. You pick one of the choices on the screen. You got that? 10 seconds. Okay, everybody, and be quiet. 86 the desktop, please. Okay, and go to black, please. Post standby. Okay, ready, come on, go. Okay, here we go. And dial 1-900-TARTY. Welcome to the program. You're playing solo for this show? All right, let's do it. Okay, pick a category. It's number one. The category behind this question is ancient kings and novelty songs. And this one's going to be worth $1,000. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. According to the song, which of these is true about King Tut? Does a jitterbug in muskrat land, had him a fine wife, had his old fiddle, drove his truck and convoy across the USA, or born in Arizona, moved to Babylonia? In a word, no. Too bad you didn't pick this. Born in Arizona, moved to Babylonia. The condos were made of stona and were apparently cheaper there. How about it? Hit me with a category. Look to do. It's question number two. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Drugs and dwarfs. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. Which one of the seven dwarfs might have benefited most from a prescription for Prozac? Happy, sleepy, sneezy, or grumpy? Think this one's right? No, it's not. Now, the correct answer is... Grumpy. Little guy could use a little zip. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Ooh it's question number three. The category, the old ball and chain. The amount on the table is three grand. Okay, get yourself set. It's time. The sacred institution of marriage is symbolized on a coat of arms by a vertical stripe down the middle of a shield. What is this appropriately called? Disembowelment, agonization, crucifixion, or impalement? Impalement. Perhaps the happiest moment in a new couple's life. Okay, pick a category. Uh-oh, mess butt tit slime chore. It's time for a Snickerfish restaurant. This gibberish question's category is Bits Like a Glove. Opening value on this gibberish question, 5,000 bucks. Okay, to solve this puzzle, you gotta think fast because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. Now, you know there's no screwing your neighbor in this kind of a question. You ready to untangle some gibberish? Let's do it. What does this rhyme with? Tights glove, the round Mabel. Hit number one, these guys wore armor. Okay, let's see if you know it. Type in your answer and hit return. Gather round and let me tell you the story of Sing Barfer and the tights of the round Mabel. Although I heard Sir Lancelot lobbied for a triangular table. He's such a square. 
How about it? Hit me with a category. Ain't no job, it's question five. Next up. Take your passion. Pop a right answer for this one, you got 3,000 greenbacks. All right, imagine a sequel to Flashdance in which our heroine decides she wants to be seen as more of an intellectual. Which dance could she do to best illustrate brownie in motion? Slam dancing, ballet dancing, square dancing, or lap dancing? And let's see the correct answer. Slam dancing. She wants to show off random movement of particles, so she just needs to stretch out in a titillating leotard, slam it to a few beautiful friends, and bang, we'll all be impressed with their intellectual prowess. Okay, pick a category. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Number six, it's number six, it's. This one's gonna be Barbie, the ultimate role model. Okay, shouldn't be too tough. This question's gonna be worth a grand. Hang on tight, cause here we go. If Barbie were a human being, what would her measurements be? 40, 35, 38, 33, 18, 28, 28, 18, 29, or 33, 23, 33? 28, 18, 29. It's the new skin and bones Barbie for the waif look. You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. 33, 18, 28. And they say Barbie isn't realistic. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. The category is, it's a great start to your day. And this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Of the following items, which would you probably least mind putting on your breakfast cereal? Planidium, Planisol, Planarium, or Plantin? Righteous. A plantain is a fruit similar to a banana. Okay, pick a category. Wait a second. Green Mountains of Ice Cream. Where would you find Green Mountains of Ice Cream other than the home of Ben and Jerry's in Burlington, Vermont? And the Green Mountains of Vermont, they're located in area code 802. Hang tight, kitties. We're going on a fiber optic field trip. Okay, we're just uh, flipping through the... Uh Burlington, uh, Vermont uh, phone book here, and pick out a name at random, and how about Mr. Pablo Guzman? Okay, we are calling Pablo Guzman in Burlington, Vermont, and uh, area code 802, let's see if he's home. Trying to reach Pablo Guzman for our fiber optic field trip here. Hello? Hello, is this Pablo Guzman? Uh, yes it is. Pablo, hey, my name is Nate, and I'm the host of a CD-ROM game show called You Don't Know Jack in Chicago, and we pulled your name at random out of the Burlington White Pages. I know this is kind of a strange call. I'm not selling anything. The reason I'm calling is because I'm looking for a really great trivia question that we can use on our program, and I was hoping you can help us out. Um, Won't take a lot of time. There's no strings attached. We're, we're a nationally distributed program. I guess I, I don't have too much time here. But, it won't uh, take a lot of time, and actually, most people who do this, Pablo, say it's a lot of fun. So you want to do it? Um, yeah. Great. Uh, I guess if I could do it, uh, if I could do it right now or something. No, absolutely. Uh, That's what we're doing it right now. But let me just really ask you quickly: what What is it that you do out in Burlington, Pablo? Well, uh, I'm an ethnobotanist um, at a uh, major institution in the area, uh -huh. and um, I do research. That's cool. What, what are you working on right now? I, uh, it's, I've got some, you know, government contracts doing research, and, but I'm really not at liberty to say. Uh, uh, that's fine. Um, yeah, wouldn't want to reveal government secrets here. Pablo, I'm going to uh, transfer you over to our producer, and he'll explain to you how this whole thing works and help you come up with a question. But it's up to you. The question's up to you, so be creative. Okay, I'll put on my thinking cap. Okay, great. Stay on the line. Yes. Okay, we'll be back to our fiber optic field trip in just a few questions, but in the meantime, we need another category. How about it? Hit me with a category. Yeah, man. Come yeah. Along to question eight. The name of this category is Acronyms and Acronauts. And it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this one. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. According to the New York Public Library, which of the following is not a real acronym for an existing organization? Bass, Bass Angler Sportsman Society, SAP, Socially Aware Politician Society, COM, Citizens Against Legalized Murder, or FEW, Federally Employed Women. Now, what was the tip-off? 
Was it having politician and aware appear in the same sentence? Was that it? All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Number nine. Here's the category. Commercials and recreational chemicals. And we are talking 1,000 bucks for this question. Okay, get your fingers ready, let's get busy. Because of its slogan, the quicker picker upper, you might think Bounty was not a kind of paper towel, but what? LSD, barbiturates, marijuana, or amphetamines? Dude? And here's the right answer. <laughs> Amphetamines! They're stimulants! That's no wonder that one waitress was able to get so excited over a friggin' roll of paper towels. Okay, pick a category. The category behind this question is... French dictators and Swedish pop groups. Right here, 1,000 bucks for a right answer. Get ready to buzz, cause here it comes. All right, which ABBA song might you expect to be about Napoleon? Take a chance on me, Waterloo, Dancing Queen, or Mamma Mia? Waterloo, that nice little vacation spot where Napoleon got his butt kicked. And coincidentally, I think Napoleon's middle name was Bjorn. Go figure. We've got 10 questions down, and for 10 more, we're going on to round two. Now pay attention, because all the questions in round two are worth more money. Let's do it. We're back to our fiber optic field trip. We've got Pablo Guzman on the line from Burlington, Vermont. Pablo, are you there? Yes, I am. All right, hold tight. Here we go. Love it! Love it! Love it! All right, Pablo, what's the category? Uh, my category is uh, voodoos and don'ts. Cool category. All right, this will be worth 5000 bucks. All right, Pablo, it's all yours. Okay, put your fingers on your buzzers. My question is, what role does zombieism serve in Haitian voodoo religion? My uh, possible answers are, number one, relaxation. Number two, capital punishment. Number three, entertainment for the aristocracy. Number four, to alter weather conditions. Pablo, what would you say to capital punishment? Congratulations, you picked the correct answer. Voodoo priests will turn a wrongdoer within the community into a zombie upon request of the aggrieved party. Pablo, great question. Thank you so much for your help. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't uh, be of even more help. No, no, that was, that was a question I don't think our writers would have ever come up with, so that was great. Um, so we've got your address, and uh, we'll send you a T-shirt and a copy of the program, okay? Okay, bye. Take it easy. Ethnobotanist Pablo Guzman from Burlington, Vermont. How about it? Hit me with the cat. Oh, boy. Here comes question 12. The category. Eeny, meeny, one more time. I'll pay you $4,000 bills for this one if you get it right. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. If you were caught up in a round of eeny, meeny, miny, mo with an ancient druid, what would most likely happen if you were chosen as it? You'd be allowed to eat first an important feast, chosen to study to become druid priest, sent to hide in the forest, or killed as a human sacrifice. Originally, it went something like Ina Mina Mona Mite and was once used by the Druids to select sacrificial victims. Of course, now it's a schoolyard ditty used to choose sides. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Question 13. Next up. Who's that knocking? It's gonna be worth $4,000. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. There's a mezuzah outside your door. It must mean you're what? Wanted by a Middle Eastern detective expecting a North African gorilla infested with Austrian insects or living in a Jewish household. Living in a Jewish household. A mezuzah is basically a little container with Bible verses in it. Kind of like a temple, only smaller. Okay, pick a category. 14! All right, let's see what we're doing here. Bathroom humor and Broadway musicals. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Okay, listen carefully. In 1978, a musical about an American brothel hit the Broadway stage. If the producers wanted to do a spin-off production of that brothel hit about a very special toilet, what would be a fitting name? Joseph in the Technicolor Washroom, The Phantom of the Plopra, The Best Little Outhouse in Texas, or Piss Me Kate? 
the best little outhouse in Texas from the best little whorehouse in Texas. Of course, depending on what you're into, you can do some of the same things in both places. How about it? Hit me with a category. It's question 15. The category is the Pope and nudity. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. The Pope is undressing to take a soak in a hot tub. If he removes his hat first, which vestment will he be removing? The chasuble, the cassock, the ratchet, or the miter? The miter is that big honking hat. Will he strip all the way down to his papal undies? Well, he miter or he might not. Okay, pick a category. Question number 16. And I like it too. This one's gonna be Morning at the Disco. And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you 4,000 bucks. Hang on tight, because here we go. In which of these tear jerky 1970s classics did someone not die at the end? Wildfire, Run Joey Run, Mandy, or Don't Be a Hero? Wrong. Joey didn't run fast enough. Joey's girlfriend gets offed by her dad. In case you're curious about the correct answer, ah! Mandy. The only people dying in this song were the ones listening to it. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. The name of this category is Slippery When Wet. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Hey, how closely do you really examine condom packages? Of the following, which is the only word that cannot be formed from the letters in the word lubricated? Crab, date, tuber, or trick? Trick. There's no trick in lubricated. However, nine out of 10 prostitutes surveyed said tricks should be lubricated. Okay, pick a category. Eighteen, wipe the sleigh clean. Number eighteen. Here's the category. I'm like, so sure it's an election. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. Okay, let's imagine that a sorority house starts a political party and gets one of its members, Muffy, elected a student body president. Although she doesn't like her, President Muffy appoints loyal party member Jody to chair the social committee. Of which of the following is this an example? Plagiarism, the spoil system, gerrymandering, or electoral college? The spoil system is the practice of handing out post-election appointments to longtime party members. Like, I think Muffy's a spoiled brat. Whatever. How about it? Hit me with a category. The category behind this question is smelly student bodies. I'll pay you $4,000 bills for this one if you get it right. Okay, listen carefully. They're having student body elections at James Buchanan High. Horshack wants to get elected, so he gets Cotter to get Woodman to rearrange the voting district so that the sweat hogs are the only ones in the district in which he's running. What is this called? Red herring, gerrymandering, jurisdiction, or the electoral college? Gerrymandering. Changing political districts to favor one candidate over another. Okay, pick a category. Ooh, ah, question number 20. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Get smart and phalanges. And this one is not going to be easy. $6,000. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Max is kidnapped by chaos agents who break one of his digits every day for a fortnight. At the end, how many unbroken digits does he have left? 3, 6, 13, or 86? Max has 20 fingers and toes, or digits, and a fortnight is two weeks, so 20 digits minus 14 days is... Six. Did you get that? All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Jack attack time. Soon as you- Oh, you already got the rules down, huh? Let's not waste time. Match on this. Stop, or I'll shoot. Okay, this is it. Final round. Let's see what you can do. Begin the attack.
I think you found your niche. Not the worthless trip is gonna help you find a decent job or anything, but who knows? But I'll tell you what I do know. You don't know Jack. Hey Cookie, MD. what's the uh, what's the deal with the contestants now? All right, if you want to play again, you just gotta let me know whenever you're ready. Okay. Are you looking for some hot conversation tonight? I sure am. My name's Chucky the Chipmunk, and me and my sexy rodent friends are waiting for your call. Just pick up the phone and dial one nine hundred Tarty. I would like to talk to you while I play with my nuts and acorns, but I can't do that unless you call. So come on, what do you have to lose? Five ninety nine a minute? Whoa, you probably spent that much today on a box of my crappy breakfast cereal, Chucky Num Nums. So just grab the damn phone and dial. 1-900-TARTY. We'll have a chocktastic good time. Under 18, make sure your parents aren't home before calling. Uh, hey, Susie. What are you doing Saturday night? You want to go driving with me? Sorry, Jimmy, but there won't be enough room in the car for you, me, and your zits. <laughs> hey, Bucky. Jimmy. Hey, that chair needs some road work. What'd you do? Wash your face with a golf please? This looks like a job for new Spackney. Spackney? What gives? Spackney! It's spackle for your acne. Flesh-colored mortar that you apply with our new neon spatulators. It's waterproof, windproof, flame retardant, and scuff resistant. Spackney, it'll smooth you out. Spackney, works better than grout. Spackney, say adios to your acne. Also available, back knee for your stubborn back acne. And for those really hard to reach places, try new crack knee. When you want the best, but don't want to spend the most, come on down to the organ bin. Excessive smoking and drinking got you down? Not a problem. Liver crawling with billions of deadly microbes? Don't worry about it. We got livers, we got kidneys, we got lungs, we got hearts, corneas, we even got a pancreas. Hey, they said it couldn't be done, but we did it. Want a baboon hut? We got them. Cross species transplants, llamas, baboons, pigs, great buys on bovine hot valves. Hey, we give you the atria and the ventricles. If you come today, we'll throw in a free supply of immunosuppressants with each organ. So head on out to the organ bin. Have a heart. You've climbed the ladder of success as high as it will take you, and you deserve a chair, no, a throne, that is worthy of your upper esh tush. Execu throne. throne. Made from the finest Corinthian leather and hardiest Chinese porcelain known to man, the Execu throne permits you to stay at your desk 24, 24 hours, hours a day, day, so you won't lose those important business calls if nature should happen to call. Hello? No, that's not what I said. I said sell! Marge, get in here. I need you to take a letter. Man, I shouldn't have eaten that pot roast for lunch. Good thing I've got my Executhrone. Uh... Thanks, Executhrone. The Executhrone, for when you're too busy to do your business anywhere else.